Hey, hello, and welcome to JP's product pick of the week. It's me, JP, and I'm here again with a cool product pick in our STEMI QT line that I can't wait to show you. Uh, so let's get right to it. Um, the first thing I want to mention, however, is that if you're watching this on so your regular old YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or one of these places, you may want to actually head to this URL and watch the show inside the product page. Because inside that product page, we have a wild 50% off. In fact, let's check it out right now. I'm going to refresh the page. I'm going to ruin the surprise and tell you that's it right there. It is the grayscale one and a half inch 128 by 128 OLED graphic display with Stemma QT connector. That's it. Head to that page and uh, you'll be able to get a really terrific discount. And you'll be able to watch the show right inside of the page here. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see, hey, look, it's still going on right there. So uh, go to the page. That's my advice. Well, before we do anything else, let's go grab one. I'm going to head on over to my mystery cabinet of wonders. And that's right, there it is right there. It is the one and a half inch, 128 by 128 grayscale OLED. You'll notice I've added a little Stemma hanger hook there to put on my board at the end of the show. This is a terrific display. It has four bit grayscale color, which means 16 different shades of gray. And I'm gonna give you some demonstrations of that in a bit. But before I go any further, let's have Lady Ada tell us all about the board. So Lady Ada, take it away, would you? This really beautiful large OLED display. Um, this was something that Scott sent over and said, I want, I want this in the store. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll get to it. And a couple months later, uh, I got to it. So this is a 1.5 inch diagonal, 128 by 128 OLED that has 16 grayscale supports. So you can see these little um, Ada flakes. Um, each one of them is a different color uh, because it has a four uh, bit per pixel display. You can see it kind of from uh, the darkest little, well, there's one black one, so you don't see that. So the darkest all the way to uh, all white. Um, you have 16 different grayscale shades. Um, it comes on a breakout board with four mounting holes. Uh, we have both Arduino and uh, CircuitPython support for it and display So you saw that CircuitPython actually, um, that was what was connected to the Feather I just showed a moment ago. Uh, you can use I2C or SPI by default. It ships in I2C mode. Um, I will say because of the size of the display, you need 8K of RAM to buffer it because it's four bits per pixel, it's 128 by 128. It's not going to run on Uno. It's not going to run on Leonardo. You really need something with a ton of RAM. Um, so like, you know, the ESP32, obviously, this is a, uh, a great option because this has a ton of RAM. Um, and this, of course, even better, it has a, a built-in uh, connector um, to communicate with the sensor. Um, another good option, which is what I originally made my demo on, is the Cutie Pie. So you see also I can just plug it in, and the Cutie Pie has... Um, 32K of RAM. No, there you go. Um, so uh, this demo is running in Arduino, and so you can see it's just drawing different shapes in uh, the grayscale uh, colors. Um, I do recommend that if you want, you know, this isn't very, very fast. I'm running it at one megahertz, but if you really want a okay. high speed, uh, I'd recommend going with SPI. You're gonna get um, really, really fast performance with SPI. You'll need it, because again, the display is 8K. Um, our Arduino library does have um, uh, like dirty window drawings, so it only draws the sections that have changed, and that helped a little bit with speed ups. But um, I will say, you know, if you're like using I2C and you're like, why is it so slow? Uh, go to SPI. You're going to be a lot happier when you can drive it at 8 or 16 megahertz than um, I2C at 1 megahertz. But either way, uh, it's a beautiful display. It's our largest OLED, 120 by 120, it's quite large. Um, but it still has all the, the fun and joy of a plug and play uh, STEMI QT connector. So uh, check it out, check out these OLEDs. I think we put a couple in the store and we're gonna be putting in more throughout the week. 
That's the brothers. That's right. All right, yeah, so there it is. I'm going to take this now and uh, plug it into a board that I've prepared for this. This is actually, uh, I've been liking this little setup. It's just a pair of uh, boards on a feather doubler. And I've got the NRF52840 feather here, as well as a little SparkFun adapter that has four, yeah, four of these quick connectors or Stemma QT connectors on it. Plus I've got a little battery. And there's my Stemma QT board. So let me, let me jump into this overhead view for you. And let's put this thing in here. So I've got a orientation right there. The yellow will be on the left plug this in. I'll restart my feather there. And here you can see I'm displaying some delightful grayscale images. Uh, the flicker you're seeing here has to do with my camera. So you're not going to see a camera in the real uh, naked eye in real life. Hey, look, there's Ansel Adams. So you'll see I've done a few different tests of some of the uh, color swatches that the color palette will support there. So Adafruit logo with a gradient. There's an Ansel Adams camera. There is a little color swatches. I got one of the colors a little wrong. There's this bit of dithering. That's a dithered grayscale image. But again, you can tell that with 16 colors, you actually get quite a beautiful range of tonalities there. So these are good for both sort of photoreal types of images as well as graphics. And now another thing I wanted to show is I've, I've prepared another demo here. This is a Metro M4 Express. I've taken another OLED. This is our same uh, 128, 128 grayscale OLED, one and a half inches. I've just screwed it into a little standoff. So it's sitting on the board here, but it's actually plugged in over the same Stemma QT connector with a breakout cable to go to clock data, ground and power. And then I have a little rotary encoder here. And again, the flickering is just to do with my camera setup. But you'll see we get a really nice responsive display here. And as I click my little encoder button, I can go and change the different levels on this graph. And what I'm actually sending here, I'm not going to do an audio demo of this, but this is sending out MIDI CC data. So that's how I've arranged this. But you could use this display for all kinds of interfaces, which I think is a really terrific use for it because there's just a certain different style you get with the grayscale display versus a typical monochrome display or a color display. So there's something really nice and crisp and clear about this that I like. And I've done it in some sort of muted color, so it's not so bright. Sometimes you'll see, well, besides this NeoPixel here, sometimes displays can be really bright. And if you're doing something in a dimly lit room, particularly with music, like I have this set up for, you don't really want a scream and bright display. And so using these muted colors in the 16 color palette that we have works really well. Uh, so those are a couple of nice use cases, I think, for the display. Put them both here side by side so you can see both sort of the graphics and the photographic style images. If we head on over to the page here, so this is product 4741. So if you go to adafruit.it slash 4741 or adafruit.com slash product slash 4741, you'll get to this page. Again, right now during the show, you can get it for a phenomenal price, $11.25. That's half off. And if we refresh this cart here, you'll see that we've uh, sold a few already. I think we, we started at 41. So we've gotten a few people to already pull the trigger. We've changed the way this works now so that you actually have a bit of a grace period after this show ends to still uh, purchase the product, especially if you put it in your cart and you're waiting around. You won't get caught, uh, caught out if you wait for a few minutes before uh, hitting go. The page here, if we scroll down, will give us a bunch of info about the display. This is using the uh, SD, uh, sorry, SSD1327 driver chipset. And so we have a circuit Python and an Arduino library that will help you use that. It's very straightforward, very easy. I'll show you some code in a second. It talks a little bit about the specs. We have, let's see, 128 by 128. I did this math. I forget what it is. 4,000 something pixels. Is that right? Let me, uh, let's do it. 128 times 128, uh, no, 16,000, 16,384, that was way off, pixels that we have in 16 different colors, uh, white through black. And 
if you click on the circuit Python support link that's inside the product description here, which I'll do, this will take you just to the driver. So there's the driver inside of GitHub. You can download that driver to use it. It also comes in the bundle, the CircuitPython bundle. And if you want to use this right away, just, I don't know if you knew this, but inside of any of these CircuitPython drivers that we have, there's usually an examples folder. And if we click here, we'll see, here's an example of simple test and gamma. So if I go to simple test, this will take us through some of the basics of using the board. You set up the display I.O. and terminal I.O. in this case to use some text and the display text, as well as the driver for the SSD 1327. Uh, and then this is being set up as an I squared C board. It can also be used as a, an SPI mode. The SPI mode is much faster, as Lady Ada mentioned. I squared C is super convenient to just plug and play and go. So it depends on your use case. If you need it to display faster, if you're refreshing very quickly, then you'll probably go with SPI. And you can see it's just commented out here how to use the SPI mode. But in my case, I'm using it in I squared C. We set up the board's dimensions and some variables for the size of, of uh, typeface or font, as well as a border. Set up the device itself uh, as the display. And that's using some of our typical display I.O. things that we've used and seen before, as well as setting up some colors in the color palette. And you can, depending on what you're doing, you can either just use sort of any grayscale and the display is going to uh, convert that to the 16 colors that it can use, or you can get fancy, which I did in Photoshop. I set up a little palette for myself that is essentially the, the best 16 colors that I could come up with, and then I can index images to that and then go to grayscale. So we're using grayscale BMPs in this case. There's a, a little bit of a massage of your graphics, and they are 4-bit BMPs, although I found that 8-bit BMPs end up uh, working out a little better. I save them as 8-bit and then let the display move them into its ideal palette when it uh, displays the image. So if we uh, head on over to my Atom here, you'll see this is the, uh, this is how I'm displaying images. So if we look here at this, this one here, you'll see uh, Adafruit logo BMP as well as this cat face BMP. So here in, in my code, you can see I'm just loading up a bitmap off of disk, uh, actually using the Adafruit image load library. And I've got this cat face.bmp and then I'm displaying that. Uh, if I open up my, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the code that's running on my little display that has the knob on it there. Let's see, one second, if, if that's gonna show up, hold on. Gotta get that circuit pi drive to show up over here. Are you going to show up? Okay, no, I, I've got it. I've got it saved somewhere else. So I don't actually. Let's see, is that it? Are you the code? No, that's not the code. Let me unplug one of these devices here. Bear with me one second. I have it saved somewhere better than that. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Okay, so this is the code, and again, this is pretty sloppy code that I put together very quickly yesterday, sort of refining things as I went. Please don't judge me on the basis of the code, but it does what I need it to do. So you can see here, I'm loading in a pile of libraries so that I can use things like the rotary encoder and uh, Adafruit MIDI and USB MIDI. The key stuff that you'll see though, I've set up a little palette for myself of grays. So I can just call gray zero through gray 15 from this index or this list. Uh, and that's gonna give me what I found to be a very nice set of grays to use. And then when I start bringing in some of these uh, bars, those are the grayscale bars. Let me, let me show you that image here for a second. If you look at these grayscale bars here that I'm moving around, uh, those, when I create those, I'm going in and choosing from that sort of palette I set up. So gray 11, gray 6, gray 4, that's a darker gray. The brightest is the gray 0 at the, at the top. Uh, and these are just using bitmap objects that I'm moving around using that um, rotary encoder. So you can see this uses basically all the tricks that you know already using display I.O. And it is uh, a really beautiful display. Looks great from a lot of angles, which you can even see here on the screen. Again, there's no flicker in real life. It's just showing up there uh, in, our, in our camera view. And uh, that is it. So I encourage you to head on over to our uh, page here. It's Adafruit Product 4741. 
I can show you the URL again. Head on over there now while the show is happening. You get a few extra minutes at the end if you want to pick up one of these at a half price. Zany, I say. Zany 50% off during the live stream, $11.25. And tell us what you use them for. These are cool displays. We'd love to see your projects. I'm sure they can find their way in as user interfaces and little um, reminders and internet connected things. Really cool display. I'd love to see how you use them. Uh, so that is it. That is my product pick of the week. It is the one and a half inch, 128 by 128 pixel grayscale OLED display with Stemma QT. I love it. You should go grab one. I'm going to put it on my Stemma QT wall of wonders. And that is going to do it for today. So thank you for stopping by. I'm JP. This has been JP's product pick of the week. I'll see you next time.